If you've arrived at this video without watching part one of it, go and watch part one of it first. So, moving on. Um, the last learning objective, <coughs> excuse me, was to recall that different animals have different hearing ranges. Well, what do we mean when we say ranges? Well, last lesson, or the lesson before, we talked about pitch or frequency, and we said that there were high pitch sounds, and we said that there were low pitch sounds, and we said that the pitch of a sound was determined by the frequency, how many times per second, for example, the string vibrates, or if it's somebody speaking, how many times per second your voice box vibrates, or if you're banging a drum, how many times a second the drum vibrates, and so on. Now, we said that frequency was measured in hertz, and if something vibrates a thousand times a second, then the frequency is a thousand hertz. Now, with humans, our ears, if I just bring the, in fact, if I bring this up here, humans are here at the top. Our ears are designed, at birth anyway, to be able to hear frequencies as low as 20 hertz. So something vibrating 20 times a second, all the way up to something vibrating at 20,000 times a second. Anything below that 20 or above that 20,000 is what we say outside of our auditory range. We can't hear it. But that doesn't mean it's not sound. It's just not sound that our ears can pick up. Microphones can pick it up. Other animals may, able, may be able to pick it up. And if you pause the video, you'll get a good idea here of the hearing ranges of lots of different animals. We take a dog. A dog can't hear maybe as low a frequency as we can, but it can certainly hear higher. And that's how a dog whistle works. When I blow a dog whistle, it, you know, it could produce anything from 25, 30, 35,000 hertz. And a dog can hear it, but we cannot. So this gives you a good idea of the different hearing ranges of different animals. Let's have a look. If you're given questions on your test, you may be asked to calculate the size of that range. Well, if humans are from 20 to 20,000, the size of that range is a difference between those two numbers. Right? We know the lowest is 20 and the highest is 20,000. But how do we work out the difference? We take away 20 from 20,000, which will give us 19,980 hertz. That will be our uh, hearing range. So just make sure that you understand that and that you can work out the range for each of these animals because you may be asked to do that on your assessment. Right, so let's have a quick look at some of the questions, see if any of these catches off guard. Um, write down the parts of the ear in order. Okay, I think you can do that. In fact, I'm going to ask you to stop the video and have a think about this before I give you the answer. Hopefully you did that. Uh, when the, <coughs> the ear vibrates, what's the first part? Um, with the eardrum, is it, sorry, the, after the sound wave arrives, the eardrum is the first part to vibrate, then it's the bones, then it's the cochlea. Question two, what are impulses? That's a great question. I didn't use the term impulses. We talked about electrical signals being generated in the cochlea. When you're talking about the nervous system and electrical signals, the word impulse is often used to mean the electrical signal. So when you've got nerves in your body and messages are sent along your nerves, we can say electrical signals are sent along your nerves or we can say nerve impulses or just impulses are sent. So the impulse is the message that travels down your nerve. And B, which part of the ear sends the impulses to the brain? Well, the impulses are generated in the cochlea, but they travel down the auditory nerve, right? So, is there anything that's gonna catch us out on any of the other questions? Let's have a look. Um, draw a flow chart to show the way in which energy is changes is transferred in the ear. What does that mean? We looked at this, this is a simple uh, energy transfer chain or energy transfer diagram and the question is asking us to draw one similar to the ear. Now when uh, energy transfers happen in the ear it's the same as the microphone. I think I touched on that before. We get the longitudinal wave, the sound energy entering into the ear and then we have the electrical impulse leaving. So the energy changes are the same. In the human ear it's a, it's a sound energy or a mechanical energy into uh, electrical energy. Right, employers must provide hearing protection if the noise level is above 85 decibels. The decibel scale is a way of measuring volume. The louder a sound is, the, the higher it up, or the more decibels we're gonna, uh, we're gonna assign to it. Um, 
we need to talk about that scale more. It's a very interesting scale, but essentially, if something is above 85 decibels in this point, that means it's gonna be a loud sound. So why would we need to use hearing protection if a sound is very loud? Well, we said before, when we talked about the eardrum, that it can vibrate, and the louder the sound, the more it's gonna vibrate. We did talk about what that could do to the cochlea and tinnitus, but what it could also do is it could actually cause the eardrum itself to rip and tear. And a burst eardrum is incredibly painful, um, knocks you sick, it's not nice, and it can damage your hearing long-term if it doesn't heal up properly as well, and it certainly will in the short term. So if we're somewhere very loud, we're gonna need hearing protection for that reason. Question five. How could you find out which materials are the best sound insulators? Right, a plan for that investigation. We'll talk a little bit more about investigating sound next lesson um, and writing up the method. So I won't worry about that too much for now. Uh, but this question here throws in some interesting terminology. Question six, which animals can hear infrasounds and which animals can hear ultrasounds? Well, if we go back to this chart, I didn't mention the term infrasound and ultrasound. I mentioned the term auditory range, all right? And I said that there are certain frequencies we can't hear below and there are certain frequencies we can't hear above. They are called the infrasound and the ultrasound. So for example, the lowest frequency humans can hear is 20 hertz. That means anything below 20 hertz is called infrasound. We can't hear it. We can only hear up to 20,000 hertz. Anything above that is called ultrasound. So when you go to the hospital and you see you know, an ultrasound um, machine or you go to the ultrasound department, those machines are emitting sound waves but just at a frequency that's too high for you to hear. But there are frequencies too low, and we call those infrasounds. And infrasounds have some very important uses, which again, we'll come on to, we'll come on to another time. Um, okay. And describe two differences between the he uh, hearing of owls and humans. On your assessment, quite often you're gonna be asked to compare the hearing of different animals. And there's only two things we can really compare. We can compare the range, Right, so with an owl, that goes from 20 to 12,000, so the range is 11,980. That's a small range. Yeah, with humans, it's 19,980. We've got a bigger range. So we, we're gonna discuss the range, we're gonna compare that, and then we're gonna discuss um, the, the lowest and highest frequencies. So with an owl, we both, uh, and humans, we share the same lowest frequency we can hear but humans can hear higher frequencies. So we talk about the range, but we also are gonna compare uh, who can hear the lowest and who can hear the highest as well. Because the one with the biggest range won't always be able to be the one that hears the lowest or the highest. If we look at a dolphin, a dolphin has got an enormous hearing range, but it can only hear down to 75, whereas humans can hear down to 20. So we can actually hear a lower sound than a dolphin, even though a dolphin's hearing range is much higher. Now I'm gonna put some sheets uh, with you on class charts to take a look at. Hopefully that's been fully straight to the point today and uh, I'll see you on Wednesday.